Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back to work on the CP Express A train. As I've pointed out way too many times before, this is based on equipment that I used to guard way back in the early 90s when I was a security guard back in Ottawa. And the opening card I showed you was the tractor. Um, I don't know how much work we're going to get done on the tractor this episode, but I want to get most of the trailers done. So if we look at the, the nose of our stock trailer, this is basically, it's not 100% the way. Thanks for running up the stairs and making a lot of noise there, dog. Um, I mean, you can see I've added a heater to it. I've also moved the landing gear back a bit. But this one at least has our glad hands in place and it has our, our socket and everything in place. And you know what? I'm looking at that socket and I'm thinking, uh, let's see if I can quickly make a mold of that and cast that sucker. Because that's better than anything I think I can come up with. So right now I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, rubber on there. If I've got any that works, it's been so long since I've used it. And the reason for that is, not that I haven't used the rubber, but the reason I need these parts is my scratch built trailer body has a pocket for all of this equipment, but it doesn't exist. So it's about four days later and this is probably about seven coats of uh, my latex. When you're doing very small parts, you don't have to have a really massively thick mold you just basically have something that can you know take the detail and and you can put a drop of the resin on top of here so let's get this off there we go and see what we got here and that doesn't look too bad should be able to should be able to put a couple drops of resin on there and get those details all right. The main one I want is one in the center. That's the electrical connection. And if I can get the top two thirds of the glad hands, even better, I'll just be able to sand down the resin parts and glue them onto the other trailer. I'm gonna leave this for a few more hours just so it can firm up a bit before I put my resin on it. Now here's our mold and you can see I've got a little bit of resin dribbled in there. This is the first part and it's the it's the receptacle for our electrical on the front of our trailer. I've already peeled that off. There he goes up the stairs again. <laughs> I'm going to peel the rest of this out. Hopefully I'm not going to lose any of these parts to the carpet monster. We shall see. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to sand them down to get rid of most of the flash. You can get it down to the actual size that it should be. We've got our resin parts glued in place and I'm just going to be giving them a little bit of steel and plus a little bit of grunge and hopefully they'll look okay. So we really need to get some taillights on our trailers here. Now there's two completely different setups that we're going to be using. This one of course all of this was was scratch built. All this part here was scratch built. So I've really got nothing from the kit other than, you know, basically this hook here and, and this piece in here. All the rest of this has been scratch built. Um, this type of taillight setup usually just has a pretty much just a plastic box that hangs down on either side and the taillights are mounted in there. And it's a pretty basic installation. And because the, the taillights are, they're, they're not flush with the back of the trailer, they're quite a ways in, there's not a whole lot to protect them. And as well as that, if, if they were to get mangled or chewed up somehow, it's a fairly quick matter to unscrew this, take it away and put a new one in. So we're gonna get the ones done for this trailer first. Here is the front and back side. Or I guess this would actually be the back side, and this would be the front side. Hmm, it's facing the back of the trailer. Anyway, the public side and the the back side of our cheapo beepo tail lights. These are the type that just hang down from the trailer body, and they don't have to be particularly armored because they're 
they're set back. So anyway, here's what you know the people driving behind would see. There's the other side. I'm going to put a little bit of gray paint on the backs of the, the the lenses. Of course, that's where the bulbs and everything would be. And once we get that done, I'll be gluing it onto the, the bottom of our trailer. And this is how our keep it simple tail light installation ended up going. See, there's there's not a whole lot to it. They're pretty simple. And these things are easily swapped out, I would assume. A couple of uh, bolts and, and you've got them removed. Um, and they don't have to be anything too robust because this is what is bashing up against your loading dock, not this bit underneath here. And I'm pretty sure this type of taillight is still used. Now for our truck with the roll-up doors. And if you've, if you've been around um, trucks and and loading docks and things you'll see what the potential problem here is the uh, and and at one point this was the way the backs of trucks were made but these taillights would be extremely vulnerable to being crushed as the truck backs up against docks truck docks generally have some some heavy um, rubber bumpers that the truck backs up to. And let's face it, most truck drivers just kind of put her in reverse and keep going in reverse till the truck stops. And I'm not saying this is any sort of a, uh, anything that against truck drivers to do this, but it's, it's just a fact that's what happens. Even if you're slowing right down to a crawl, that's quite the impact. And taillights uh, like this, would, would soon get crushed. So I'm gonna show you a picture of the taillight assembly that is on the, uh, on the Loblaws trailer that I built for Father's Day a year ago. Okay, now this is a much more modern trailer, but you can see that the taillights are protected by a heavy metal framing that, uh, Basically, you know, keeps them from getting mashed when it backs up against a dock. And, you know, most most trucks either have the taillights on this part here heavily protected, or like on the other trailer, they're, they're inset and they're just kind of out of harm's way. So we're going to want to do something similar to this. I've started preparing for putting my guards around the taillights by... Uh, basically scraping the paint away. And if you're going to jump in the comments and uh, say, why didn't you do all this months ago? I don't know. If I was some sort of a genius, I think I'd be stocking shelves and doing YouTube in my spare time. Anyway, it's just silver paint, so I should be able to touch it up afterwards. But yeah, it would have been a whole lot easier to do all this work well in advance. Okay, so there's our protective framing, let's say. Anyway. This is 0.4 thou square strip styrene, basically cut and glued to shape. We'll touch up the silver paint and then we'll, we'll be putting the lenses in place. Here's a quick look at that uh, framing that's going to guard our taillights. Before I actually glue them in, but you can see now it's similar to what was on that... Uh, trailer I did for Father's Day. And this is what most trailers have, is a, is a big heavy metal framing around where the taillights go. Now all the taillights have been installed. You can see how the whole thing looks. I think it's a, it's similar, but different, but similar to what we had on the back of the Loblaws trailer. And I mean, I suppose I could have scraped everything clear and, um, uh, done a slightly different configuration. I just figured we'll go with what AMT gave us and just simply frame around that. So that's our two variations of truck taillights for our two variations of trailer. So now it's time to sit down and make up my name boards are going to go on so the sides of the trailer. And I got to tell you, I just did a, a quick search online and unfortunately, most of the pictures that show the CP Express and Transport logo are on, oh, I wouldn't say they're die cast, but um, toy trucks. Some of them were die cast. Some were by Promotex. 
Um, and some of them looked pretty good, and some of them are just absolutely terrible. You'd think that the Canadian Pacific logo would be something that would be pretty easy to get right. I mean, after all, it's a black triangle on a uh, white semicircle. But boy, the proportions <laughs> range from, you know, that looks pretty close to what were they thinking? So anyway, I did manage to find this picture on Pinterest. It says it's from the Doug Grieve collection. Hopefully nobody rem reminds me showing it here. Um, the nice thing is, is it basically shows what we're trying to model, with the exception of the fact that the tractor is different. The lead trailer here has the chamfers on it, like the one I scratch built. So anyway, if we look at the name boards on the trailers, you can see that's, well, I mean, these are the real trailers. They were the size they were. I certainly don't remember them taking up, you know, half of the side of the trailer or anything like that. If we look, we can see they weren't even half of the height of the trailer. Probably maybe 40% of the height of the trailer. Now, where there were variations uh, in how long they were, like sometimes there was a bit more blue before the edge of the lettering and the, the edge of the Pac-Man. Sometimes that changed. But you know what? I'm going to go with this as my gold standard for doing the artwork. Well, I'm downstairs using my steam-powered computer, and this computer has Corel Draw on it. Unfortunately, this copy is damaged, which means that I, I can't save anything. I can create with it, I can print, but it won't let me save, and I don't even know where the original CD-ROM was. So, the nice thing is, is it gives you such control over creating images and things. So here is the, the wire frame, which looks nothing like what we want it to. And this is what we want it to look like. Um, I used to use this program tons and tons. Not very often now, but anyway, this is getting close to what we want, I think. Yes, I think this is getting close. The logo certainly looks like what was on some of my old N-scale rolling stock. Certainly as close as anything else I've seen. Far closer than most of what I see. Um, the typeface is supposed to be Helvetica. This is actually Ariel, which is very close. I think it's a copycat. So you know what? Let's just quickly cut this out. And we'll drop it on the side of our trailer and see how it looks. So there I've printed a, a quick sample. And by golly, that looks about the way I remember. And it certainly looks very close to what we see in the, the Doug Grieve photo. If we slide her down here to the outside post one, looks like I accidentally came up with the exact right length to go between the posts, which is perfect. Um, basically, these were either a metal sign or they were a plastic sign. They weren't a sticker. They were actually like a metal piece that was attached to the side of the trailer, or like I said, possibly a plastic piece. So on an exterior post truck like this, it, it stood proud of the lower parts of the panels. So, you know what? I'm really happy with this artwork. I'm pretty... I'm, I, I think I'm going to go with it just as it is. I might shove the CP Express and over just a smidge, but that pretty much looks the way I want it to. This is not the actual sheet that came out of my inkjet printer. Um, I took that to Staples and I made a color photocopy of it. And the reason I do that is the, uh, the inkjet images can run if they get wet, which is not good. I mean, I'm not planning on dipping my model into water, but if it does get wet at a later date, I don't want it to get ruined. Now, even though this is a photocopy image, I still gave it a shot of this uh, final fixative stuff here, which also puts a bit of a gloss finish on it. Although the photocopy usually does have a bit of gloss to it anyway. It's what I did for the uh, the, the no-name trailer. So I figure why mess with it. The next step is going to be to cut these out and spray some glue on them so I can actually apply them to the models. So we can take up residency on top of the washing machine. You can see I've got our name boards on our pups, you know. Don't know how nice it feels to have those on there. 
So, but they were actually the easier part of the markings to deal with. Um, still, the the cab is going to be a problem. And the numbers, I've got some ideas in mind. We're going to have to see how those turn out. But I think these look pretty good. They certainly um, make me think of the trailers I used to guard. And the nice thing is they're not oversized. And I think I've captured the, the shape of the Pac-Man fairly well. As I said, as I was doing the artwork, there's some real butchered examples out there. And you kind of think, did you guys even look at the real thing? So anyway. That part of our project is done. So this is our stock mud flap. This one's been modified. If I flip it over, you can see we've got some pretty horrid uh, ejector pin marks on this one. They're gone on this one. All I did was I just sanded the back of this one and I narrowed it and tapered it towards the edges so that when we paint it up, it will appear to be much thinner than it really is. Now you can absolutely sand these things massively till you get nice and thin, or you can just simply use some some uh, plastic cardstock. However, at least this does have uh, some detail around the outsides, and it has the Trailmobile name on it. Now, even though our our champ for trailer was probably made by Manic, um, you know we can still use Trailmobile. Uh, mud flaps on them because this is the sort of thing it gets swapped around from trailer to trailer and that sort of thing through the miracle of not filming it we've got our mud flaps all ready to go here um they're basically the stock parts as i described earlier they've been thinned down on the edges and i've basically added a horizontal bracket to each one of them and that'll go to the frame of the trailer so that way they don't have to be attached to the underside of the trailer, which tends to make them a little too high. Okay, there's our mud flaps glued in place. They seem to be on there pretty good, although I could see me knocking them off at least once before I'm done this project. Why? Why does he run up the stairs just as I start filming? Every time. So, I hope you'll forgive me for doing this work off camera. The, uh, battery died on the camera and I actually felt really energetic this morning. So I cranked these puppies out and basically what you're looking at are the anti-nosedive gear that CP Express had fitted to the, the noses of their trailers, especially their pups. They didn't have them on their 40 footers. And um, there seemed to be like maybe four or five designs and they all looked like they had been made in a local welding shop. Maybe they were made in their own maintenance facilities. I don't know. I always got the sense that um, these things were installed after an accident. Um, and basically what they did is once you had uncoupled from the track or from the trailer, they would lower these things down so that if a forklift was going onto the nose of a trailer and there was a particularly heavy pallet or skid right there in the nose, these things would, you know, if the trailer wanted to nosedive, these things would pre would prevent that. Now, you know what? In almost two years of working there, I never once saw these things deployed. Um, the terminal I was at had a couple of portable stands that they could roll underneath the noses of trailers. And that seems to be what they used. Or they would just simply stick a tractor under the nose of a trailer but yeah these were on most of the uh most of the 20 foot pups and they they definitely looked fairly crude and they were pretty rusty and they looked like something that you really didn't want to fool with lots of pinch points and stuff like this so these are all in the up position as you can see one of them here is just the collar the leg which slides up and down is missing there were numerous ones that were missing those, so uh, we'll bring you back after I paint these up. And here is our parts all painted up. Now, as you can see, I've just basically gave them a coat of um, neutral gray and liberal amounts of rust. These were very, very simple things that were 
made in like a local fabricating shop or something. These were not factory made. And as you can imagine, and run up the stairs again while I'm on camera, why don't you? <laughs> These these were very simple, and as you can imagine, as these things slid up and down through this collar, the paint would tend to get scraped and rust would quickly set in. And these were not factory produced. The trailers did not come with them. All I know is that sometime before the early 90s when I worked as a guard, they were installed. Um... And, uh, and they certainly weren't regularly used. They weren't something you put down when you drop the trailer. They would only be put down if you were going to be driving a forklift into the nose of it. And they had, uh, they, 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 they had a, a different kind of stand that they used most of the time instead of these. Or they would just stick like a city tractor underneath it. So next step will be to glue these on. And there's our anti-nosedive gear installed. Um, as promised, this one's a little bit lame. It's missing the vertical member. And um, I actually saw a fairly new trailer just a couple days ago that had uh, similar anti-nosedive gear fitted onto it. That particular one, they were hinged so you could just flip it down this way. And I believe CP had some like that too. But these are the ones that stood out in my mind. So, uh, as always, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. It's New Year's Eve. I really want to get this video up. And I don't think I can get anything more meaningful done today. So, I think I'll put some time into uh, finishing editing this and putting it online. So, I hope everyone had a... A, maybe a better <laughs> year than 2020. I hope 2021 was better for most people. Hopefully uh, 2022 is going to be more normal, as normal as we can ever get. So until next time, thanks for watching. And until then, just keep on modeling.